Hi, Kelly. Hi, Jesse. How are you? I'm doing great. Happy Monday morning. Happy Monday morning to you. Hey, I just want to say that this seems to be doing really well on our Facebook page. This was our last video, Track Clicks, was a trending Facebook pit post for Bywater. So I feel as though partners are really liking our little short videos. What do you think? I think so too. We seem to be getting some pretty good feedback. And, um, you know, we mentioned in our last one, if you have ideas where you want us to see, um, you know, things that we walk through in the system, shoot us an email, send us a ticket, and we'll be happy to go over it. Yeah, definitely. Sounds good. All right, right Kelly, what are we going to do today? Today, we are actually going to create a staff patron and assign some permissions to um, that, that new staff member. Our, so, our, um, as most libraries, their patron category would be something like library staff or staff. So we're going to hop over to the Koha administration module and just see what patron category um, that would probably be. If we're going to go over there, Koha administration under patron categories, way to go. And so in our patron categories, we have quite a few set up. You can see we have some for alumni, faculty, and our library loan, self-registered, and then we have one for staff. Okay. Um, staff is typically used for you to track um, your library staff in the system. So you can easily run reports, see who's a super librarian, um, and things like that. Yeah. So once we have that staff preference set up, um, now we can actually go in and set a staff patron. Great, yeah. So let's go up to our patron module. We'll come down to new patrons and let's come right down to our staff category. All right, and let's get it started. So of course, everyone knows we can set up our patron required fields um, in which system preference, Kelly? Ooh, borrow a mandatory fields, maybe? Yeah, borrow, all right. <laughs> borrow a mandatory fields. So if there are ones that you know you want to set um, for those permissions, of course you can go there um, and set those. Then we also have ones if you don't want any fields uh, visible in there. And ding, 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 Kelly, which one is that? Oh, um, I have no idea. Borrow unwanted. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know why I had a yeah. test coming up. Next time I'm going to have to study all these system <laughs> references. Borrower unwanted. Got it. No, so, making notes. <laughs> all right. So let's set up our um, staff patrons account. So what we'll do is we'll come in here and um, we're going to set up our patron. Um, of course, again, remember the fields that are mandatory will be in red. Your mm -hmm. um, other fields will be um, specified. We're going to scroll down. Um, you know, we'll just quick um, enter in a quick email address. Yep, good. I think an email is pretty important in most accounts nowadays, don't you? Because we have so many notices that can be sent out to patrons um, that that's a huge, that's a really important field. 100%. Um, we have our um, system preference turned on for auto calculate a barcode for our patrons. Uh, which you saw in one of our previous videos, yep. which we talked about. Um, and as we scroll down, we'll come in and, you know, we'll just create a quick username and password for our patron. And that's important because that's how they're going to log into the staff client on their first day. Excellent. And then finally, our, our messaging preferences. So again, if they do have a specific SMS number and you're using the SMS feature within Koha, you'll want to make sure you enter both their SMS number and SMS provider. Um, all right, so let's set up our, our staff patron account. Now, for a staff member to create staff permissions on a new staff account, that is a system, that is a permission as well. So not all your staff will be allowed to assign permissions to other staff members. Excellent. So Kelly, what's our next step? We're going to go into more and just set permissions. Yep. All right. So let's knock this out. So now that we have Alex set up, now we're going to go in and actually create what permissions um, this individual has. Now, of course, we have our super librarian. That's going to give them access to everything under the sun. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then we always have that required for staff login, so they need to have that check marked um, because so then they could access the staff client. So that's really important. Next, we have our um, circulation 
parameters. Um, so this is going to allow us to come in and select which circulation features they have access to by clicking the main heading that will give you access to everything. However, if you don't want them to have access to everything and you just want to select certain um, parameters, then you can come in and individually select those. Yep, definitely, definitely. Um, our next one, of course, is going to be um, manage system settings. Again, that's going to be in your administration panel, so you can um, select those circulation rules or all or none at all, of course. Exactly, exactly. Then you have your patron information. If they can add patrons, modify patrons, view patron information, that's, that's important. Okay, then we have our permissions again. So this is what allows them to set user permissions. Um, a good example for this one would be like, um, let's say you have your head of circulation and he or she will set the permissions for all of their staff. Then you would want to make sure that that individual, the supervisor, has this permission so they can go in and set the permissions of their staff. Exactly, exactly. Then we have the holds. So placing holds and modifying holds is, is kind of crucial to, that you can allow a staff member to place a hold but not modify those holds priority. So you could pick and choose which hold system pre, um, permissions they can have. Absolutely. Um, our next one is going to be um, edit the catalog. So this one is kind of uh, crucial too. So depending um, sometimes staff members will be able to edit items, you know, go in, update the barcode if the barcode has fallen off or, you know, maybe write a non-public note in there about something. So editing items would be good. But now maybe not all people have access to edit that catalog. So this would be one where you would want to take a look at the specifics of the catalog. And deleting items is one of those. So it's good to know that you can, the very top one there, can they delete the items? Yeah. Excellent. Then we have manage patron fines and fees. So we have a couple under here that um, all the permissions for managing fines and fees is one, and then we have a specific one pulled out for writing off fines and fees. So you could go a little granule in this, um, in that fine module. Absolutely. Then we get into acquisitions. Um, this will give you permissions to set for EDI if you're using artifact ordering, um, managing orders, managing baskets, uh, managing your vendors, and of course your budget. So you can specify um, each level of the acquisitions module within here. Then we've got our big one, the tools. This is a, a big, there's a lot of tools that we have in Koha. I find the tools are the most powerful feature. So we should be careful on which ones we give our patron, I mean our staff members, because we have things like batch deletion of items, <laughs> batch modifying, we also have the calendar, uploading files, browsing the system log. So there's a great deal of um, options in the tool section. Absolutely. Then we get into editing authorities. So if you are using authorities in your system, you'll want to make sure that any of your catalogers or technical service staff that do have access to edit authorities do have access to this one. Yep. Then we have serial subscriptions. Um, if they are allowed to create new subscriptions, delete ex subscriptions. Um, so it depends on maybe you have a cataloger specifically doing serial subscriptions, um, then you would have a lot of these permissions for them. Um, next we have our reports and um, there, there are three aspects here that you can really drill down. Mm -hmm. Can they create reports? So can they write the SQL, go in there and create them? Um, deleting SQL reports. So once those reports are created, can they go back and delete? And then finally execute. So for example, in some um, libraries, maybe you have somebody that runs the overdue report or your fines report. So maybe the only thing they do is really execute or run reports, then you would want to give them access to that. Yeah, this is a new, what, 1611, they, they broke out this rep report yeah. module permission? Yes. Really, yeah. Um, now we have course reserves. So if your library has course reserves, if they're allowed to add course reserves, remove them, or even edit any of the courses that are existing. Yep. Perfect. Then we have our plugins, of course. Um, so if you're using any special plugins, for example, um, the EDS plugin for the discovery layer or the patron emailer plugin, which is <laughs> another one of our videos, <laughs> yeah. um, this is where you would manage that information. Yep. Then we have lists. Um, if people can um, delete public lists is one of those options. 
And then finally, patron clubs, which is a new feature in 1705, um, which essentially allows your staff members to edit clubs or templates or enroll patrons in clubs. And there's a video on that too, right? That you did that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, excellent. So okay. there we have it. That is the basic of setting up your staff patron. So the next time you get a, a new staff member um, and you know maybe it's been a while since you set them up, um, here are the steps to go through and, and get them all set up in the system. Great, Jesse. This was awesome. I'm glad we got to do this together. All right, Kelly. Nice job. Have a great week. Have a great week, everyone. See you next bye -bye. week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye, -bye.